Hey, this is Michael from Norcrow.com. Uh, I did a video maybe about 10 years ago of how to replace the suspension spring on a um, anniversary clock, also known as a 400-day clock. And a lot of people had some requests. It's been one of the most popular videos. So I'm going to redo that. I'll show you how to replace the suspension spring. Um, but I want to give you just a little bit of history and background before we do that. So hang on and we'll get to the fun part. This isn't really a 400-day clock, but it looks very similar, and I wanted to show it to you because I'm a little excited about it. I bought it recently. Uh, domed clock, very similar to a 400-day clock, but it's electromagnetic. There was a battery that went down inside this tube, and the issue that I'm having is I don't know how to get power to the darn thing. I'll probably rig up a battery and some connections, um, but I need to read up on it more. So it's not a working clock. Um, but it is an older one and it's super cool. It uses electromagnetic power to swing a pendulum, meaning that there's actually a circuitry in that. When the pendulum swings, it energizes that circuitry, kicks in um, power to the electromagnet, and pushes the pendulum, keeps it swinging. This one was made by Pool. And one of the things I wanted to show you, when I got this, it had the original dome, but the dome had a big crack in it. So um, I had to chuck it. I couldn't live with it. And I wanted to show you how you can tell if you've got an old dome or a new dome. I replaced the dome on this one. And if you can see, there's a glass bead running around here. That's the way they make the domes now. So if you get a glass bead, you know that it's a fairly current dome, maybe within the last 20, 30 years. <clears throat> this one's a Gustav Becker that I've owned for probably about 20 years now. Um, it's the second one I bought. The first one I bought, the, within a week somebody offered me more money than I could refuse and I got rid of it and I kind of kicked myself around. So when I had the opportunity to buy another one, I went ahead and did it. I took it home, put it on the shelf and um, decided that I'm just going to keep it. This one does have an older dome and the glass is cut instead of having that bead from the from the mold where they made it they actually cut the the glass at the bottom and that's how you can tell when you have an old dome clocks a lot more valuable when you have an original or even just a, an old dome that shows it's from about the same period this clocks from about 1908 it's a gustav becker it is a 400 day clock unlike this one they're also called anniversary clocks they were marketed um, as a clock that you could wind on your anniversary because you only have to wind it once a year. They will run for a full year uh, partially because the pendulum moves so slow. These are clocks where the pendulum will do um, about six beats a minute instead of a typical clock that, that may do 40 or more. Um, so it allows everything to move more slowly. The clock can run longer on one mainspring wind. Uh, they also put an extra gear inside them um, as far as the design goes as opposed to a regular pendulum clock so you get a, more runtime out of that but also there's less power up to the top because you're running that power through an extra gear and that makes it a little harder for them to run and there's a lot of tricky things about them it's not just that you're going to put a spring on it it might take off and run um, but possibly not you may need some other um, adjusting to be done um, these were the, um, the early pendulums. It's called a disc pendulum because of the way it looks. It is a disc. It has a pair of weights on it and a rod, a threaded rod that goes through. And the clock that came with, the key that came with this clock would be a double-ended key, one to wind the mainspring. The other side would have a small end on it to turn this rod and that would uh, move the weights in or out. If the weights go in towards the center, centrifugal force makes the clock run faster. Um, to slow it down, you would turn the, <clears throat> that rod the other direction, the weights move out, the clock slows down. With uh, most 400-day clocks, you can make three to four hours a day adjustment just by turning that rod. If you're shopping for a clock, a 400-day clock, Mostly you're going to see the newer style. These were made um, <clears throat> mostly in the 1950s and 60s, and they were sold at Navy Exchange, and uh, it seems like everybody in the military after World War II bought one and sent it home to their mom. So the, the U.S. market is pretty much flooded with them. 
they're not terribly valuable, but that also means you can pick them up really cheap. Um, five, ten dollars at uh, thrift stores, take them home, learn how to work on them. <clears throat> they're beautiful when they run, they're totally silent. And um, I, I suggest winding them twice a year instead of once a year because it will slow down after six or seven months. Um, and they're not super great timekeepers. If you can get it to be within a minute or two a week, that's probably the best you're going to do. Um, and partially that is because they do go so slow. It um, makes the clock a little harder to keep time. Pool, Gustav Becker. This is a Schatz. Which, these are the two most common ones that you're going to find. Schatz and Kundo or Kinninger and Oberfeld, which basically are interchangeable um, names when you talk about the company. Um, Schatz always puts a number inside a circle on the back of the clock. That tells you the model. This is a Schatz 53. It's one of the smaller clocks. Some people call them miniatures. Um, that tells you a lot. Most clocks don't have any identifying numbers on them, especially from this period. So Schatz was really nice to us by putting that on there. 53. The full-size ones are mostly Schatz 49s, and that'll tell us what size suspension spring to put on the back. When you buy these clocks, almost always the suspension spring is going to be broken. And that's a technology that's been improved on, but they don't make them unbreakable. You can see the little thin wire holding that pendulum up. People break that wire all the time. The safe thing to do is to take the pendulum off unless it has a locking device uh, to transport it. Otherwise, there's a good chance you're going to break the spring. The new springs that we sell at Norpro.com are the temperature compensating springs. That means they're made of a different material than the originals. They keep time better because it will compensate for changes in temperature that affect the clock. They actually, uh, if, the, if the temperature makes the clock run faster, the spring will slow it down a little bit. So they keep way better time than the originals. Um, they're, they're a different color than the originals. Some of the, the originals had a gold tinge to them. They were wider. Don't be alarmed, you get a new spring and say it doesn't look anything like the original. That's because they're made of a different material. And what we're going to use for reference is absolutely the best book on 400 day clock repair by Charles Terwilliger. You can buy this on our website, norcrow.com. We'll put a link down um, in the video so you can find out where it is. Uh, it tells you history, repair tips. It identifies just about every 400-day clock ever made and tells you what kind of spring to use on it, what mainspring to use, um, and just all kinds of other valuable information. Both of the modern clocks that I'll be working on today have locking devices to protect the spring when you do have to move the clock. The Schatz clock has a sliding bar down here, and what that does is it lifts the pendulum up and locks it up against the structure at the bottom. The Kundo, um, they got a little tired of people losing the bottom blocks, which is really, really common when you're when the spring breaks, the bottom block goes away and you can never find it again. Kundo uh, designed a locking device that keeps the bottom block inside, and that's a really neat feature for, for saving the bottom block, but when you do have to replace the spring, the springs still break, um, it's a lot harder and this is what somebody requested that I show how to do that and, and that's what I'll be doing today. Um, and another thing I didn't cover, I don't think I did in the old video, is the timekeeping adjuster on the 400 day clocks is this disc on the top of the pendulum. This one has a plus and minus with arrows pointing to it so to slow it down turn that disc in the direction that the arrow is pointing to the minus to speed it up, the, the direction the arrow is pointing to the plus. Sometimes they have an F and S, plus and minus, it's all the same thing. Schatz does the same thing. They have an F and S on theirs. Um, and that's pretty universal with the modern day, you know, anything other than the, uh, the disc pendulum I showed you earlier. This is the way this clock came when I bought it. No spring at all. Top block, bottom block, 
fork, the screw to hold the top block in, pin to hold the pendulum into the bottom block, and the cover. There's a screw missing from the top block, and I haven't been able to match it up with anything, so I'm just going to replace it with a new top block right there. Now, we'll go to Twirliger's 400-day guide and find out what spring we need. It's uh, Kundo miniature. Um, the back plates of the clocks are in this book. Just about every one that was ever made. And um, look them up by name. And uh, then identify the plate, the back plate, by the drawing. And then that will tell us what spring to use. And if we needed a main spring, it would also tell us that. All right. I found the back plate in the book. It's this one right here. It's got all the markings on it. The, um, the, the, there's this little finger here for adjusting the, the pallet. And that's what's also in the drawing, so I know for sure this is it. And it tells me to use a .0023 spring. That's the thickness of the spring. If we put the wrong one on, the clock would probably run. But if the spring is thicker than it should be, it's going to run way fast. If we put a 24 on this clock instead of a 23, it would probably gain three hours a day. So it's really important to get the right one. Um, and also it tells me to use unit 5E. So I'm going to go to the section where the 5E is. Here's the 5E right here. That's what the unit should look like when it's done. And I got my 0 .0023 spring. The springs come longer than they need to be, so you're going to need a good pair of scissors to cut it. We've got our 0 .0023 inch spring just like the book told us to do. I like to put the fork on first because it gives me something to hold. So I'm going to put that on there in the approximate position that it's going to be.
That's it for today. Visit us online at norcrow.com. There's links down in the description. Appreciate your time.